Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Welcome. I can't barely see you, but that's okay. I wanted to take a picture and selfie, but we will wait maybe for the light to, to go on again. Uh, no, the, yeah, that's okay. We, I can wait. Uh, so I'm going to speak about search and AI. You know, you have why you are here because there is search in the title or AI in the title, uh, maybe AI. Uh, so there is a new era for search, uh, and this is what I want to cover today. Uh, my name is David, as you said, and I'm available on Twitter, X, if you want. Um, I'm super delighted to be here. I have been speaking here like six years ago about Elasticsearch, you know, for search. And so I'm happy to be here again. So the schedule for today is uh, we are, I'm going to cover just a little bit what is the classic search. If you don't know Elasticsearch, how, how many of you knows Elasticsearch already? No, not everybody. So, so I will cover what Elasticsearch uh, is doing with the classic search and what are the limitations of that. The introduction of new uh, machine le learning uh, models and what change with that and how you can uh, nowadays use Elasticsearch as a vector database, basically. So I'm going to show you that, uh, how you can combine the old techniques with the new ones all together and how ChatGPT, OpenAI and LLM generally uh, change a bit the game and what are the consequences for uh, Elasticsearch. During this talk, uh, it might happen that I mention some commercial features. So you will see this sign, commercial, on the slide, which means that this feature is specifically under a commercial license. But normally, you won't see a lot of that. So Elasticsearch. You know, for search, I got some um, hand raised. By the way, do you recognize my lovely accent? Yeah, OK. I'm speaking French English. That's OK. So Elasticsearch is based on this super powerful uh, Java library named Apache Lucene, uh, which has been around for more than 25 years or so. And this is one of the libraries we are uh, contributing a lot, by the way, uh, as a team. And all the vector uh, search effort has been provided mostly by the uh, Elasticsearch uh, team, by the way, also. Um, yeah, I lost the connection. You know this movie, this sentence, right? So these are not the droids you are looking for. These are not the droids you are looking for. So this is a sentence. What is happening nowadays when you index that into Elasticsearch and you search for those terms? There is what we call an analysis process uh, where you go through different stages, like you are going to filter, for example, the characters, and here uh, we are going to remove the HTML uh, content, for example, for, from the text, which is uh, in yellow. And then we are using a tokenizer, which is going to tokenize the text into a stream of tokens. Uh, like we are going to break at every spaces and remove the dot at the end of the sentence, basically. Basically, my daughter told me, no, don't say basically, say basically. Okay, so I'm going to do that. She's at the rear. Um, so, and then for every token that you uh, produced, use a filter. Uh, so lowercase the, the, the content, then use a stop word, which means remove the uh, known, the sorry, the common words from, the, from a language, from English, for example, and then do snowball, which means uh, take the singular form of the, the terms or the, the radical of the verb, something along those lines. So this sentence, if you analyze it with Elasticsearch at index time or search time, will become something like that. Droid, you look. What's the problem with that? The problem is that we are missing something. So I was indexing, these are not the drawings you are looking for, but I'm indexing the drawing you look. So I'm totally changing the meaning of the, the sentence here. So that's one of the first problems that you have. We are yeah, missing the semantic. Um, if I'm looking for machine instead of droid, it's, it's not going to work because machine will produce a token named machine and not droid, so it's not going to match. So you can use synonyms in Elasticsearch to fix that, but there are nowadays other ways to solve that, doing semantic search. And semantic search is totally different than literal search, so token by token. Right. So we need to cover that. 
And the goal of that is to change the, the way uh, we are providing search engine to our users. And instead of uh, asking questions to our users when they need to provide the exact terms that we have in the documents, we need to understand the meaning, right? So here, what ships and crews, I, do I need to destroy an almost finished Death Star? Or is there a secret weakness, something like that? So the, the machine should understand the, the meaning of that, the semantics. So Elasticsearch, you know, for search. But maybe you don't know that it's also for vector search. So technically, take Elasticsearch nowadays as a vector database. Like if you have Elasticsearch installed somewhere on your uh, uh, platform, and you want to add uh, vector search features, then you just need to use the vector search feature inside Elasticsearch. So what is a vector? Who knows this movie? OK, not that many old people. Oh, I'm sorry for people who knows. <laughs> Airplane. Airplane was the name of the, this movie. So what are vectors? So basically, basically, sorry, Pauline, uh, vector represents um, uh, a category, I would say, uh, a way to categorize your data. So here I have, as an example, I have a, an image uh, of uh, Princess Leia on, on the left part and Darth Vader on the right part. And I want to represent this data. Is it either realistic or is it either a cartoon? So the coordinates for Leia is minus one because she is realistic. And for Darth Vader is a, car is a cartoon, so it's plus one. <coughs> of course, I want to represent over um, categories from my data set. So let's say I want to represent now if it's a human or a machine. So Princess Leia now is a totally a human, so the co coordinates are now minus one plus one. But for Darth Vader is half cut, something like that. So it's one and zero. And we want to obviously represent more data and group data together. So here, look. So minus one, zero, eight, because of the hand it has been cut. And then the other thing, so this one is a machine, but realistic way. And we have here Obi-Wan Kenobi with a human, but a cartoon uh, way. Of course, here I'm showing only two dimensions, but you can imagine that you have many more dimensions than this. And I cannot represent that on the, on the screen, actually. And what's the goal of that? I want to be able to search for this. Like, OK, this is Han Solo. And I want to search what is the closest the data that I have in my data set if I'm searching for that. What should come first? Leia? Do you agree? Leia? Leia should come first. And then who's next? Luke? OK, Luke will be probably the closest. I think you, you had this in mind. You can represent where actually you will put uh, Han Solo on this uh, space. And you can easily guess that Leia is the closest one. And then for the next one, I'm not sure. It could be either Obi-Wan or the machine. I'm not sure what, what it will be. And then I, I, oh, what I know, sorry, Oops, sorry, is that at the end, it will be Darth Vader, for sure. Yeah, OK, which is at the opposite. Uh, uh, on, on the data set. So the, what you need to do is to uh, actually transform your data set to vectors. And to do that, you are going to use uh, machine learning models. And that's the, one of the hardest part, ah, hardest part, you got it? Yeah, for me. Uh, it's to, write, to find the right model for your use case. So you can start with off-the-shelf model, like on a given face, you have a lot of models available. And you can start with like uh, Microsoft E5, for example, which is nice for uh, not only English language, so for French, for example, or Bulgarian, I guess. Uh, uh, OpenAI script for images to transform your images to vectors, the representation of that. So, uh, and if it's not enough, you can apply hybrid uh, scoring. So we will cover that in this session. Or otherwise, you can uh, create your own model. But this requires a lot of expertise and because you need to train your own data. But maybe this is the, the thing that you need to do. Remember something, uh, training and the use case. Uh, I like to put it in that way. 
uh, let's say that you are training yourself to run every day uh, 100 meters race, and then after a year of training, you go to go to run a marathon. It's not going to work, right? Because you are not trained to the right use case, to the production use case. So you need to find the right model for your uh, use case. How does it work behind the scenes? So bas basically, <laughs> I will get it at the end. Um, so you have something like documents, images, documents, audio, what have you, and you have a way to transform that into embeddings, so vectors, the representation of this data as vectors. So we call that dense vectors. On the other side, you want to search, so you provide a query, and you will go through the same process. We generate a vector representation of your query, and then you want to just try to find what is the nearest neighbor from, uh, from this uh, query uh, with the, the, the things that you have indexed uh, so far. And I'm going to cover exactly what, how it's working behind the scene uh, in a moment. But how do you index vectors? So for those who know Elasticsearch already, uh, this is a typical uh, index query that you can send to Elasticsearch. I'm missing the index name, but it's useless here for the example. So let's say that I'm indexing um, uh, e-commerce uh, data. Um, so I have a description of the, the, the product that I want to sell. I have an image and what have you. So when I'm posting this document to Elasticsearch, I'm providing a JSON document which contains the description, for example, of the, the, the product, the price, and what have you. When you want to do a vector search, you need to create vectors. This is what I said previously. So to do that, you can use uh, Python, for example. And the first demo I will run is using Python behind the scene. And you send the, the text to this Python script instead of sending that directly to Elasticsearch. In Python, you run your machine learning model, which generates the embeddings. So this is what you can see in yellow. So this sees, for example, the representation of the description text as a vector. So with the semantics or whatever, depending on the model that you, that you have. You can do that as well for the image. Why not? You have that. So you can have a representation as the, for the image as a vector. If you are using the commercial uh, uh, product, the, the commercial version, or you are running on Elastic Cloud, then you can have access to Elastic uh, Machine Learning nodes, where you can upload your models within Elastic directly. And instead of having a Python script in the middle, then you can just post your document to Elasticsearch, and then we will do the inference at, uh, at uh, index time for you. Right. So we will generate the, the, the description as embeddings. We don't support yet images or bin binary in general, uh, but it works very well for text. It's coming, but it's not yet there. Uh, to upload your model, we have a script named Eland. Uh, so there is a Docker also version uh, of it, which is, to me, easier. Specifically for a Java developer, I don't have always the right Python version on my laptop. So you choose the uh, model that you want to use on Engine Face or wherever. You load it to the cluster, and then you start it, and you are good to go. We are supporting uh, a wide uh, variety of uh, NLP models to, pro to perform different kinds of tasks. So name entity recognition model, for example, is super nice. You have a text, and you want to automatically extract from the text the fact that um, uh, there is a city, there is a location, there is a person here, and what have you. So that's super uh, nice. Uh, text embedding, this is where you have the semantic, uh, if you want to represent the semantic of your text. Text classification is like sentiment analysis. I want to see if it's positive, negative, or with anger, or what have you. So that, that's, that's a lot. So we have the list of the supported models so far. How do you search for vectors? So we have index vectors. How do you search for vectors now? So what you do, you take your text, you go through the same Python script that you wrote previously, which generates embeddings for you. And then instead of searching using match queries or terms queries for those who know Elasticsearch already, uh, you use a KNN query, which is a new type of query, which is uh, responsible to run the vector search. So you provide the vector, and then that you are good to go. The cool thing with that is that you are in inside Elasticsearch, so you can still have access to all the um, the features that you know already, like filtering by department. Let's say that uh, you don't want 
uh, your colleagues to have access to the HR data, for example, so you can filter by department before asking the question to the system. You have pagination, aggregations to compute, um, to compute uh, aggregation on top of your result set, and, and so on. And same with the commercial license, instead of doing the transformation by yourself, you can just use the machine learning node, provide the text, and we will do the, the inference for you at, uh, in at search time. So to do a good vector search, you need three components. This is kind of a recap here. Uh, so KNN is the query. Uh, as the mapping, you are going to type your uh, field as dense vector. I will show you that in a moment as an example. And then a way to generate embeddings, it can be by third party uh, services. I will show you that uh, you can uh, connect to OpenEI, for example, if you want to generate embeddings to, uh, from OpenEI, why not? Uh, in local, if you want to run um, uh, uh, things locally, or in Elasticsearch itself with the commercial license. How does it work? Really. So we need to find, when we provide a query, what is the closest document, right? So I put the query here, so I, I can have the coordinates of this um, document, of this vector now, which represents uh, Han Solo. And what I'm going to see is what is the angle between the vectors. And uh, the closer the vectors are, the better is the, the, the document. So what we use to that, cosinus, cosine, sorry. Uh, this is the formula for cosine. I forgot all my math. So I'm going to explain that in a moment. But what we do, we compute a score, which is 1 plus the cosine divided by 2. What does it mean? If the, we have similar vectors, the angle is close to zero, and which means that the cosine is close to one. One plus one divided by two means that we have a score close to one. If the, we have orthogonal vectors, the cosine will be close to zero. Zero plus one divided by two equals zero five. And we, if we have opposite vectors, then we have a cosine which is minus one, so we have one minus one divided by two is close to zero. So we have a score between 0 and 1. If we have 1, those are the same vectors. Not the same, they have the same angle, right? Not technically the same. If we want to compute also the, di the distance of the vector, the length of the vector, you can switch to another method that we have, like dot product, for example. And for this one, we are going to take into account the length of all vectors and, uh, and to, to compute the score at the end of the day. And we have another one, which is the Euclidean distance, which is this formula with some optimization, I would say. Okay. When we started uh, the vector search journey, like three and a half years ago, we were doing brute force to compute that. So we were comparing every single vector in the database uh, with the query, and we were doing this cosine thing, and it was slow, slow as hell. Well. Right. And we don't like when it's slow in Elasticsearch. So we implemented a paper named HNSW. And basically, uh, uh, we are uh, proceeding by layer. So we are trying to find the closest uh, vectors. And then we can compute a cosine only on the, on the closest vectors that, that we found. Um, it might be not as accurate as the cosine thing, but it's a good trade-off. And we have actually uh, a way to uh, switch from one um, from the brute force method to the other uh, on the fly because we know in advance from how many documents we are going to cover. So we have a, a, a switch, an automatic switch to, to do that. Uh, we are contributing a lot uh, to uh, Lucene, uh, so we are making a lot of progress. So we have increased at some point the number of vectors that we are supporting um, recently, like yeah, six months ago, more or more. Uh, we increased the number of dimensions that we are supporting to uh, more than 4,000, which is a lot. It does not mean that you need to use all those di dimensions, because there is a trade-off of all that. Um, uh, vector search needs a lot of memory. We need to load the layers representation that I mentioned in memory to be able to be fast enough. Um, and uh, so it, it requires a lot of memory. It's not on the heap. It 
for the Java uh, people here. Uh, it's off heap, so that's cool, but uh, still you need uh, a lot of memory. Uh, indexing is slower because you will see in my demo that I'm going to uh, provide um, uh, a table of uh, float numbers, which represent the vectors. And so that's a lot of numbers that are sent over the wire, which make indexing slower. And also the, the indexing of the vectors is, is making that slower, even though we are making a lot of improvements in Lucene and Elasticsearch. And merging also is slow. So merging is something that is happening under the hood in Elasticsearch in every single shard that you have. A shard is a split of the index. Uh, we are uh, creating what we call segments, which are immutable data structure. And at some point, we are merging those shards together. And the more data you have, uh, the slower it will be. And the more IO you will, uh, it, re it will re require. So be aware of that. So some best practices. Avoid searches uh, during indexing, if you can. There is a cool feature in Elasticsearch named aliases. Uh, it's ba basically a, a, a link, a pointer to a concrete index. And so the production is going to fetch the data from this index. And what you can do uh, while this is running, you can uh, create a new index on another machine. Uh, do, <coughs> do your indexation. And when it's over, you just switch the alias, and you're done. Uh, exclude vectors from source. That's the best practice. I will show you that in a moment. And the two other things I'm going to cover that with this slide. So to reduce the required memory, um, you can, so this is a representation of the number of the vectors and the, the size of the vector. So if we are providing floats, uh, yeah, <laughs> if we are providing floats, um, uh, it will take four bytes per uh, uh, number that we are providing. Instead, what you can do is uh, we, what we call quantiz quantization. Uh, instead of um, using floats to represent your number, maybe you can use integers. So it's less precise, but maybe it will work for your use case. And this is the default now in Elasticsearch when you are sending a float inside the... the the, the, the vector uh, database, uh, we are quantizing it for you automatically as ints. And we are working also to uh, quantize that as, uh, as bits as well. So in the future, we will have that. Uh, you can switch, of course, to the um, uh, float implementation if you want. But at least with that, you will reduce the, the memory requirement. And also something that we don't do out of the box uh, uh, in Elasticsearch, uh, it's to reduce the number of dimensions. Maybe you know that your machine learning model is going to produce a zero value for a lot of rows, that, or a lot of columns, sorry, that you don't need. So maybe you can just exclude them in your Python script and reduce the number of um, dimensions per vector, if you can. So don't be trapped by the marketing thing. So don't trust me. I'm biased totally now. I have been working at Elastic for more than 12 years, so I'm totally biased. So try it yourself with your own data set, with your, uh, the right um, machine learning model, and make your own decision uh, based on that. Uh, there is this um, uh, benchmark uh, available online uh, where uh, we have um, uh, also a view of uh, what Elasticsearch um, as a vector database is uh, providing as a result. It's not that bad for a Java uh, application because Elasticsearch is running in Java. So for a GVM uh, application, it's not that bad. Remember that we don't have yet access to all the power of the machine. It's going to change with the GDK. So I'm expecting a lot of change. So we are in the top uh, uh, engines, but not uh, the, the top one. But I think it will change in the future. The, the, at least this is my hope. So we cover um, some part of the vector search. And now let's say we want to combine the base, the, 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 the what we used to do uh, in the past, not in the past, the term uh, query with the uh, vector uh, query. So this is called hybrid search. Uh, and I am going to compute a term base score with a vector score. And I am going to combine all that. To run that into Elasticsearch, you have uh, Boolean queries, for example, that you can use. 
So here, the first one is a match query on the description field with a summer clause text. So this is literal matches that I mentioned uh, initially. And then I'm adding the KNN search that I mentioned before. So this is the vector search. I can do that with the same text that I generated as a vector, or I can uh, do that for uh, another part of the data, why not? And while we are at, at it, you can do pre-filtering. Let's say I know that my user is in the woman department and is looking for a uh, woman outfit. It's useless to compare that to the full data set. So if you want to have a, a query which is much faster, then you can just reduce the number of vectors that we want to compare to, and then use normal filters if you wish. Um, you can use also, you can call multiple uh, KNN queries if you want, so one search for the image, one other search for the title, what have you, so you do what, what you want. Uh, we are producing ourselves a machine learning model, so which is available within the commercial license again. Um, so this is not dense vector as per se, but sparse, sparse vector. I'm going to cover that in a moment. So this is helping us, this is the best of both worlds, I would say. So it's fast as literal search, so much faster than the uh, vector search. Uh, but uh, it's, you, are the, you have the benefit from semantic uh, search, uh, I would say. So how does it work? You can define uh, with the inference by, um, API uh, some uh, services to do some uh, infer type of inference. So the first one, for example, is sparse embedding. So I'm going to create sparse vectors. The, the next two ones are text embedding, so it's more for dense vectors. So I'm connecting the first one to the service Elser, which is our own um, machine learning uh, and our own model, some settings. And same, I can connect to OpenAI to do the inference in, in, uh, in OpenAI or in, in Hugging Face if you have an API key, why not? And how it works behind the scene? <coughs> so when you do the inference, and you provide those two texts, what uh, the, in the model is going to produce is something like this. So I like to put it, to put it in a way, it's like synonyms with a weight. It's not only synonyms, okay, but you have a weight associated with it. So when we are going to do then the search, we are going to search for those terms with the right weight for each term, and it will be much faster and still super accurate. So that's a good thing to do. But then, I mentioned that we have uh, the, 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 the multiple ways to, to do searching, so the term base, the, uh, the vector search, the else way as well, and we can combine all that. The problem is uh, all those uh, ranking um, uh, features are providing scores which are totally different one to the other. And to solve that problem, we implemented RRF, and this is working this way. Uh, it will be working this way, so we are still in 8.13 in Elasticsearch, but uh, 8.14 is coming, so I prefer to present you this, um, this one. So you provide uh, a retriever, which is, uh, and you want to do hybrid ranking, and the list of the retrievers that you want to have, the sub-retriever, is like, I want to run a match query, which is the literal search, and I will also to do text expansion, which is Elser model, and I want to do KNN, and mix that all together and rerun the document, the result set. How it works behind the scene? Let's say we have two algorithms. So the first one is, going, is giving a score between zero and one, probably it's the vector search. But the second one is providing a score between zero and 1,000 and blah, blah, blah. If we are just boosting the result and the score, it will be hard, right? Because there is a such div diversity in the score that it, it's not possible. So instead, we are going to ignore the score and implement this paper, the RRF uh, thing. So it's super simple to understand. You take the rank in each algorithm of the document. So A uh, for the first um, ranking algorithm, A is uh, on rank one, B rank two, etc. And, s and same for the other one. And then you add a value, which is 60 by default. I don't know why, but it's a good value. But you can change it, right? It's a good value. 
And you do the same thing for the other algorithm. You take the rank of each document. And then you blend all that together. And it will compute a score for you, right? So because the document A is um, super high in the first ranking algorithm and high as well in the second one, then it appears at the first position, right? So that's a way to re-rank everything. It's part of the uh, commercial uh, license, uh, I would say, sadly, but OK. Can I have more songs? Yeah, jump, jump, ready? Are you ready to dance? No? So, I love DJing. You have my, pod my podcast here. And uh, as a demo, I wanted to do something around sound and music. So, this is what we are going to do. I was not expecting that, but thank you. <laughs> <coughs> so the demo. Let's say that I have a lot of audio files, not that much, like 10 or something like that on my laptop. And I'm going to use a machine learning model, which is going to compute vectors out of each audio file. And I'm going to show you exactly what the model is doing. And then I'm going to store that uh, into uh, Elasticsearch uh, here. This is what I'm doing. And what I want to do is to hum a song. So technically, I will have a, a song already stored on my laptop. And I want to compute the same, um, the same kind of embeddings. And you do the kind and search, and then give back the result to the user. So I want to find similar songs. Oops, that's not this one. So let's do that. So I have, is that big enough? Yeah? OK. So I have your um, Python book. Uh, of course, you can do that in Java if you want as well. But here, this is a Python book. So I'm importing some dependencies. Um, and this is where I'm getting the machine learning model, by the way, from this uh, library. And this is here where I'm creating an instance of the model. And this, this is exactly where all the smart thing is going to happen. It's not in, inside Elasticsearch. Right? I'm going to compute everything using this model. And this model is not part of the Elastic uh, stack. Um, <coughs> so let's test a connection. OK, it's working. Yeah. So I'm using the last version of Elasticsearch, which is this version. And I'm going to create an index. So I'm going to remove the existing data and create a new index. So if you know Elasticsearch already, I'm doing standard stuff like, OK, we have a genre field, which is a text field. I want to do full text search on it. Uh, this one is a keyword. This one is a date. But the important part you need to focus on is this one. So audio embedding will be where I'm going to store the representation as a vector of my uh, audio file. So it's a dense vector. That's the number of dimension. And this is the cosine similarity I'm going to use to perform the search. So this is where you can change to dot product or whatever. One of the good practices I mentioned exclude the, the vector from the source. Right? So here, this is what I'm doing. I'm excluding this, which means that when I'm going to uh, call Elasticsearch and get back a, a response from Elasticsearch, I don't need to have the vector because it's useless for my end user. What I need is only the over data. So I'm excluding that from the source. It will save me some time. So I created the index, all good. So I have some uh, scripts here, so define a list, uh, list of the files that I have, and here another script, which is generating the embedding. So let's focus on this one. So I have this method, get embeddings on the audio file. The first thing I'm doing, I'm loading this audio file with a library, a Python li library. Then I'm taking, I think, one of the, uh, the mono signals, I guess. And all the magic is happening here. I'm using the model that I loaded, doing the inference on that audio file. And this is generating my embeddings. And then I'm indexing that into Elasticsearch. So it's a, just a JSON document that I'm providing with the vectors representation here. Right. And then I'm indexing that. 
I'm searching. I'm going to show you the, the, the content just after. I'm going to first to run it. So those are the audio files that I have on my laptop. And for each file here, I'm going to generate the embeddings, so the vector representation. And I'm going to store that into Elasticsearch. Right, that's easy. So let's do that. So you can see here the, the, the name of the file and here the start of the vector representation of this audio file. Okay. What does it mean? What does mean those vectors? Um, if you go to the GitHub page of this uh, machine learning model, they are providing um, a list of the labels where how they basically, lab basically label the, the, the sound. So uh, the, the machine learning model is able to detect if it's a speech from male, female, uh, ch children, if it's what, uh, a baby crying or something like that, someone rapping, humming. Uh, I don't know what we have. Mm, snort. This one is interesting. OK. So all the sounds that you can imagine. The interesting part to me is that the ants or mosquito but here we say, okay, maybe it's music, musical instrument, it's the guitar, electric guitar, bass guitar, acoustic guitar. So the model, of the machine learning model is able to detect all that and put some weights on the vectors uh, depending on that. So compute the vectors out of that. So piano, orchestra, what you have, uh, yeah, cello, violin, strings, and blah, 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 whatever. So this is the classification. Then, <coughs> what I want to do is to hum a song here. And I, I will need the song from the laptop. And then uh, try to uh, search uh, for the closest song. So let's listen to this one. Ah, I need the song from the laptop, please. Anyone uh, from the sound uh, engineer team? I need the sound, please. Okay, thank you. Na 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 na. Okay, now you can. Na 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 na. So it's me. Na 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 na. I'm doing my best. Na 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 na. So keep the sound up, please. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm generating the embeddings out of this file, and you can see the representation of my voice as a vector. That's that's me. And then I'm running this query audio vector. So what it does, it's here. I'm calling this method with the vectors, and I'm just doing a query with the KNN search that I mentioned before. Right? That's easy as that, just providing the, the vectors and searching, calling the search endpoint and getting back the result. So what do I have? The first hits that I have are those ones. So the first one is myself. Of course, I'm the closest vector to myself. I'm a bit disappointed because I should be 100% and not 99%. This is because of the preci precision that we change. I re remember we changed to float to integer, so probably we lost something in translation somewhere. But anyway, I don't want this one because I know this one is, should be excluded. But the other one, this one, is close enough, right? And so let's listen to this one, this one. Na 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 So it's cool, it's the same song. But don't be tricked by demos. It's just a demo, right? So I'm using the same song. Actually, what the machine learning model did is to find that it's a, someone, a male probably, singing, humming a song. So that's the reason it's the, the same. I could hum another song, and it will work the same way, right? Um, the next one is this one. So we have still uh, like a man or singing and some instrument in the background. So that's explain why it's there. And then what we have, this one. So it's not Shazam, right? We are not recognizing songs. We are just classifying music or audio files. That's, that's what we are doing here. And then the next one. 
I'm happy with this one because I'm feeling like an opera singer, but uh, no, I'm not, actually. So that was running with the free version of Elastic. There is uh, here nothing in the, uh, that you need from the commercial uh, side of the things. And this is something you can reproduce anytime you want <coughs> using this uh, repository. I will share the link uh, at the end with a QR code. So ChatGPT came. Um, there was this fear from all the people say, okay, search engines are dead. Uh, we don't need search engines anymore because we have a chat GPT. And actually, it's not the case. That's the other way around. I found that people are now trying to implement a better search within their uh, system than uh, they used to, to do and give more love to the, to the search part, which makes me super happy. So, LLM is basically you, are, uh, basically you are asking a question, sending that to the LLM, your favorite one, which is trained on public internet data, and it's giving you one answer, which is not always the right answer. See, one answer. I'm, I like to say to my kids, and to put it that way, don't trust what the LLM is sending you back. Uh, I mean, it's just like a friend. You don't need to trust your friend, even for uh, your friend is saying, yeah, I can ensure you this is the right answer. No, maybe it's not correct. So that's the same thing. It's a friend. Um, sometimes, uh, if I'm asking questions, so sometimes the answer is fair. So what is the current version of Elasticsearch? Uh, so it's ChatGPT 3.5 uh, for this example. This one is fair because at, at pre previously it was saying the version is 7.10, period. Now it's saying, okay, no, actually, when I indexed the data, it was 7.10, but maybe it changed, so please uh, um, look at the, the official website. But this one is more interesting. I asked this question to ChatGPT. How much money do I have on my Revolut uh, personal account? Sorry, I can't help you with that. Why? Because I don't have access to your personal uh, Revolut account. Thank you. I don't want you to have access to my personal Revolut account. But I still want to be able to ask you questions about my Revolut account. So how can I solve that? Maybe you heard that a lot. Hag is the solution for that. So basically, you ask the same question that you were asking previously. But instead of sending that directly to the LLM, you send that to your favorite search engine, which is Elasticsearch, of course. This is mine. And within, you can do the term search, the hybrid search, the vector search, whatever you, you can combine all that on your business data, whatever the data is. And then send to the LLM your question, then this context, and tell the LLM, please, now build me a nice answer out of the document that I'm providing you. And if you don't have the answer, please don't tell me another answer out of my context. Don't hallucinate, right? So that's a way to, to do that. And I'm going to show you that in uh, Elastic Playground, which is a new feature available in the coming release 8.14. So let me show you. So you have this Playground available uh, in uh, Kibana. So this is uh, Kibana. So you can select here the index you want to work and you work with, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to select this one. So basically, that's the content of the wiki pages that we have in Elasticsearch, or some pages, not a lot, but just some, some, some content. And then I can start here. And I can start to ask questions to my system. So what it's going to do, it's going to first ask Elasticsearch, and then ask the LLM I connected to here, this model, OpenAI to build a nice answer for that. So I can put some instruction here. And I can say, who is Thomas Pesquet? You know Thomas Pesquet? He's a French astronaut. Yeah, maybe it's only known in France. I don't know. So I'm asking that. And the answer, which is exactly what I'm expecting, is I don't know Thomas Pesquet. If I'm asking that to the LLM directly, it will say, OK, it's a French astronaut, blah, blah, blah. He went to the st station and blah, whatever. <coughs> and, sorry. I can ask, what is NASA? So you know NASA, right? So 
that's the question here. And we have the answer. So the NASA is not, is not the spatial, spatial agency, spatial agency, but it's the organization uh, at Elastic. And so we are collecting data from our data set, right? And we are asking then the LLM to uh, uh, provide the answer. So we sent uh, some tokens. <coughs> Sorry. And for example, the, 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 the link we are making with the this answer, so this answer is built from the, the, this text, which is coming from Elasticsearch. Okay. So we are connecting the dots. The cool thing with that is that you can edit the context, so number of documents you want to have, etc. You can view what is the query that we are doing in Elasticsearch. So here we are running the the, the Elser query, the, the the sparse vector query that I mentioned previously, and here you can uh, add, add more instruction. And what I love a lot is this thing, view code. Here, you want to uh, actually do that in your own Python and do your own rag, then you have everything ready here, ready to go. Right? You just have to copy paste that into your uh, Python script. And you have the prompt, by the way. Here. Uh, the, the prompt instruction are here if you want to read that. Okay? That's how it works behind the scene. You have that for long chain Python. I hope to have that in Java with long chain 4G, for example, at some point. That will be super cool to have. So we'll see. Technical preview. It will come soon, I hope. I can't promise on any date. But soon. So conclusion. To build a nice uh, semantic search engine, you need ba basically all that. So a way to store and search for vector embedding, so vector database, which is Elasticsearch can provide, a way to create vector embeddings, either within the product or outside, as you want. So we can provide that as well. And I did not mention the document level security, but as you can filter your document, let's say you are a HR person, you can have access maybe to the uh, payroll information when you are asking questions to your wiki pages, for example. But an engineer don't have access to that. But with document level security, which is super easy to implement in Elasticsearch, then you know that you are going to narrow the response to uh, only the, the, the documents that are accurate for the, for the context and all that stuff. So I hope now you know that Elasticsearch is also for uh, semantic search. That's all what I have. Thank you for attending my session. Thank you.